All right, everybody, welcome back to the channel. It's Maddie here from Chill TCG, and today we're back with another Evolving Skies deck profile. Uh, today we're going to be looking at Duraludon VMAX, the other dragon type Pokemon to be released in Evolving Skies. I know that a lot of hype is around Rayquaza, and we did cover that the other day, but um, I really, really am a big fan of Duraludon VMAX. So uh, this is kind of my take on what a Duraludon VMAX list might look like. I do think that um, it might change around a lot as the format goes on, especially in post-rotation, things like that. But today, um, I, well, you know, we're just going to take a stab at it, and we're going to talk about uh, just how good this card actually might be. So right off the bat, uh, we are going to be running the metal type Duraludon V. Um, this is, of course, going to be a metal-centric deck, so I did think it would be better to run the basic uh, metal Duraludon rather than running the dragon uh, type. This one is, is a little bit better, in my opinion. Um, hard code is actually pretty good, so if we start with it, uh, we do have effectively 250 HP. That's going to give us a little bit more protection, but we also are going to be able to metal saucer onto Duraludon. Um, and for that reason, I think that it's just going to be a little bit better than running the dragon type Duraludon V uh, that came out in Evolving Skies. Uh, getting right into it though, Duraludon VMAX, uh, super, super, super cool uh, VMAX Pokemon here, 330 HP, so a pretty big Pokemon, no weakness and no resistance, definitely going to be pretty good as well, um, retreat cost of 3, so we got to watch out for those Sylveon decks, but we have the ability Skyscraper, uh, this reads, prevent all damage done to this Pokemon by attacks from your opponent's active Pokemon, um, uh oh, all right, we're back. Sorry about that. Uh, Skyscraper. Okay, so prevent all damage done to this Pokemon by attacks from your opponent's Pokemon uh, that have special energy attached to it. Uh, this is actually really, really, really good. You might seem like, you know, that you might be like, that's kind of like a niche uh, ability, uh, but realistically, it's actually quite good. Um, I think the big the reason and kind of the main thing that Skyscraper is going to be so good against is going to be against those Urshifu decks. Rapid Strike Urshifu looking to be one of the best decks uh, in our entire game, especially post-rotation with Metacham and things like that. Heavily reliant on uh, the Rapid Strike energy. Uh, so, of course, Skyscraper, we're going to be immune to Urshifus and the Metachamps, whatever might be using that Rapid Strike energy. Sylveon could be another thing. And as well as Single Strike Urshifu, which I also do think is going to be an extremely good card after rotation. Uh, so, that's going to be the main reason, but there's tons of other special energies, things like Aurora Energy. Um, uh, what else might there be? Uh, so, like Aurora Energy, Speed Energy, if, if Lightning comes back. Um, capture Energy is a big one. Uh, there's just a lot of special energies that are really common in our format. So we're going to be completely immune to damage by any of those Pokemon. We also have a really, really, really good attack, fighting, and two metal energy, G-Max Pulverization. Uh, 220 damage, and this Pokemon's damage isn't affected by any effects on your opponent's active Pokemon. Uh, so this means we're going to be able to hit through things like Azama Zenta. Uh, we're going to be able to... Um hit through like Luke Metal if it's reducing damage. Uh, we're going to be able to hit through Decidueye, which is really, really nice. Uh, so really, we're doing 220 damage no matter what. There's nothing that they can really do to stop that. Um, and for that reason, I think that the attack is actually really great, really consistent. 220, kind of a sweet spot. We're going to be able to one-hit KO most V-type Pokemon, um, other than things like Azama Zenta or Blissey like that. Uh, but yeah, G-Max Pulverization, an absolutely great attack. I, it's a single-strike Pokemon. Uh, we're not running any single-strike energy or other single-strike cards. Uh, that could be a way that you build the deck, but in my opinion, um, right now, I don't know if that's actually the best way to do it. But Duraludon VMAX, really great, um, and uh, this ability is absolutely great. It's going to make a lot of people kind of rage quit or just kind of scoop the matchup really early on. Uh, for that reason, it might be tough for us to get some gameplay on the ladder, but uh, we are also running two Zacian Vs. Uh, just an incredible card. Uh, of course, 230 damage for three energies is super, super good. Uh, but we also have Intrepid Sword, which is going to be a really important ability in the deck. Uh, Resistant Grass, uh, Leafeon running around. I think Zacian is just really needed in a deck like this. Uh, we're going to usually use it to end our turn and maybe get an extra energy or two on our board. Uh, other than the two Zacians, we also have two Zamazenta Vs. I think Zamazenta is extremely good in Duraludon, uh, mainly just because we both have these abilities that make us immune, right? So uh, between the Zamazentas and the Duraludons, there's a lot of matchups that we pretty much just kind of auto win. Um, especially post-rotation, where Zamazenta, I think, is going to be extremely good. Um, we got to be careful of Path to the Peak with this deck, though. That is going to be a one downside. Uh, we will kind of struggle a little bit with things like Ice Rider, but at one side, we do have four Metal-type attackers. Uh, so for that reason, I think that that matchup is actually quite even. Uh, so... Uh, I think that the Duraludon is actually pretty well positioned, honestly, in our format. Uh, Zamazenta immune to all VMAX Pokemon, similar uh, to um, Glaceon VMAX. So, again, and, and Glaceon is a deck where, where of course, uh, um, 
going to be hitting for for uh, for weakness. You know what I'm saying? So I think that um, having all these immunities as well as having some metal type uh, attackers that we can hit super effective against is going to be extremely good. I think Zamazenta and Duraludon, it's kind of like the new Luke metal, if I'm being honest. Uh, going to be kind of like the post-rotation Luke metal. Definitely a really scary deck. Um, and I think it has a good Urshifu matchup as well as an Ice Rider matchup overall. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm really excited. We are running the Metal Transfer Bronzong engine. Uh, we have three of the Evolutionary Advantage Bronzors. Uh, this will be rotating out, but for right now, it definitely is our best option. Uh, we have the ability where we can, uh, if we are going second, we can evolve into that Bronzor. Um, our bro evolve into the Bronzong the same turn that we play down the Bronzor on our bench. So, definitely uh, kind of the preferred one to play right now. Um, not going to be super a big loss when we have to play a different one after rotation, but for right now, I do think... Uh, that the evolutionary advantage, advantage one is better. If you don't know about Bronzong, we get to move our metal energies from one Pokemon to the other as many times as we'd like during the turn. Definitely going to be super good. Uh, gives us a lot of flexibility. Overall, it's just a really great card. Um, and uh, that's also a big reason why we're playing Aurora energies, other than maybe like a single strike fighting energy. Because um, we can move Aurora uh, with Bronzong once it's attached to any of our Pokemon, because it does count as a metal Pokemon uh, when it is in play, or a metal, a metal energy, so... Definitely super cool. We have a Dedenne GX in here uh, just to draw some cards that might be switched out for Crobat later on. And we do have a Galarian Zapdos V, and I think that running a Zapdos V is kind of smart. We are running Bronzong uh, with Aurora Energy, so Zapdos fits in the deck really, really well. Um, and it also helps our Eternatus matchup, which we do have a really great matchup, I think. Between the two Zamazentas um, and Galarian Zapdos V, that matchup should be really, really good for us. So, uh, realistically, you know, have a pretty good Ice Rider matchup. A uh, great Urshifu's matchup and a great E-turn matchup. I think that this deck is in a really good position, and I think a lot of people are kind of sleeping uh, on Duraludon, uh, at least this type of list, if I'm being honest. I could be wrong, uh, but in my opinion, it definitely is pretty good. We have two Evolution Incense, uh, four Quick Ball, three uh, Pokemon Communications. That's going to be our main Pokemon search here. We do have four Metal Saucers. When you're running Bronzong Box, you definitely uh, want to be uh, playing Metal Saucer. Uh, just one of the best cards if you're playing a deck focused around metal type. Uh, we do have one reset stamp thrown in here, three switches, and two chaotic swells. Now, you could justify running more chaotic swell, but uh, realistically, most decks that are running Path to the Peak are probably going to be something like an Ice Rider, um, so it's not super important. I think that two chaotic swell is kind of more than enough, um, at least for right now, but that might change post-rotation. Uh, three bosses orders, and two Cheryl. Cheryl is another card that goes really well with Bronzor, or sorry, with Bronzong. I keep saying Bronzor, uh, but Duraludon VMAX. Uh, it, it goes well with Duraludon and Bronzong because uh, we can move the energies off of Duraludon, heal it all the way up, heal all the damage, and then move those energies back, and uh, just kind of like a good combination. Kind of the classic combo, Bronzong and Cheryl, so we're running two of those in the deck as well. Uh, three Marnies, four Research for some consistent draw support, and then we have four Aurora Energies and eight Metal. Uh, so overall, I really like the list. Um, it's... it's <laughs> It's very fun. Uh, when you're playing on the ladder, from what I've tested, a lot of people kind of uh, concede the match early once you kind of get your setup going. Um, and this is actually one of the few decks in the format, I think, right now that benefits from going second. I think going first is also pretty good, but I think going second is actually uh, preferable in some ways. Uh, there's a lot of different things going on in the list. I don't know if it's as consistent as some of the other decks that people will be playing in the format right now, uh, but definitely kind of like a little slower setup deck. Uh, but I think that uh, decks like this uh, kind of are... A little bit easier to, to, to take more time to set up uh, than other decks. We can kind of keep his Zent in the active, uh, get a Duraludon VMAX up there and keep it in the active, and we're kind of safe relatively so. Um, but it's also a deck where we don't often use Duraludon VMAX as much as we would in other decks. Um, you know, if we're playing Ice Rider, there's no reason to play Duraludon VMAX. If we're playing Shadow Rider, uh, well, I guess we would still play Duraludon VMAX, but you know what I'm talking about. Uh, there's some matchups where going with Duraludon VMAX just isn't even the best play. That being said, uh, one of my favorite decks to come out uh, in this uh, new expansion, Evolving Skies, and I'm really excited to try it out um, and showcase the deck here in some videos. We're going to try to play some games on the ladder, uh, see if we can get some good gameplay, but like I said, people uh, who have a bad matchup against this list are definitely just not really uh, trying to play out the whole game, so it might be hard, but... Uh, we'll try to get some gameplay. We'll try our best. Uh, let me know in the comment section below what you think of Duraludon. Uh, do you think it could be playable? How would you guys play Duraludon? Um, and uh, yeah, don't forget to like the video and subscribe. Super excited. Um, so let's get right into uh, let's get into some gameplay. All right, hopping into some ladder matches with our guy Duraludon VMAX. Definitely going to be uh, an interesting uh, video today. We're going to see if we can get some people to play out their games. Um, definitely a deck that um, I haven't played too much of. I've tested it a little bit. Uh, played some games, tried to build out the list, make it a little bit better, but, um, you know, I think that this is a deck where the matchups uh, are a little bit more, um, I guess, a little bit more intricate. We won the coin flip. Uh, always kind of a catch-22. Do I want to go first or second? 
Um, I think that going second is actually quite a little bit better uh, with Bron uh, with uh, Duraludon. So we're just going to go ahead and do that. Uh, we have a double Zama Zenta start here. Um, which is interesting. I'm not going to bench that second one just in case it's not relevant in the matchup. Um, but it looks like we're playing Sylveon, uh, which is weak to metal. So like I said, uh, should be a pretty decent matchup. But uh, we see the Dark Energy. So this is most likely going to be um, probably one of those Sylveon Rapid Strike box lists. But a list that we probably have a pretty good matchup against with Zamazenta and Duraludon VMAX. So I'm actually pretty, pretty excited. We're going to see the Dream Gift as well as that Dark Energy attached to the Sylveon. Um, so he's going to go ahead and grab that, uh, that Ribbon which is pretty cool, and uh, he has that Remorade on his board, so I'm actually kind of cool with benching that second Zamazenta. I think that's probably going to be totally fine. Let's put the Swell into play, and I'm going to attach an Energy to the active uh, Zamazenta V, and I think we're just going to Marnie. I would like to get a Zacian down, and a Duraludon down, and a Bronzong down. Um, those are kind of the main things that I would like. Doesn't look like we're going to get all of those options here, uh, so I think our best bet is probably going to be to calm away the Bronzor, uh, we could grab a Dedenne and play that discard these three cards from our hand. Uh, that is an option, I suppose. Uh, or we could just grab a Zacian and Intrepid Sword. Um, not really 100% sure what the best option is, but we definitely need to do something kind of to progress uh, our hand at this point. Um, kind of an interesting situation. I don't know. Do we Dedenne here? Uh, do we grab one of our Zacian Vs? Um, there's a lot of questions. I think we're going to go a little bit more risky, and let's just grab a Dedenne. We're going to discard the Aurora Boss and Metal Saucer. Um, sometimes not the best option, probably, uh, but I like to kind of play fast pace and be a little bit more aggressive when I'm playing the game. So uh, we don't get the Zacian or the Bronzong, uh, or the Bronzor, but we do have a Duraludon V, which we can get down, and we can go in with a VMAX next turn. Um, so we have a Marnie in hand as well. So we're kind of playing the slow game. Like I said, it does take a little bit of time to set up here, uh, but we should have space on our bench for another, um, or for that Bronzor and a Zacian V. And we see that Rapid Strike energy, and he's actually going to Marnie us. Uh, not super great, um, and uh, but realistically, we're immune to if he goes through the V Maxes. So, uh, but this Sylveon is going to be worth one less prize card. Uh, so if he chooses to not evolve it, um, our hand though not too great. Uh, that we got Martied into, unfortunately. Does he have boss's orders in hand? He does evolve into the VMAX. Um, and we would definitely like to get into a Duraludon VMAX here as soon as possible. Um, and it might not be worth benching the Zacian, but I think we can afford to bench one. Uh, if we get into the Duraludon VMAX, then we should be in a pretty situation. He's actually not going to attack, um, like I said. Uh, so definitely an interesting play on his part. He's going to end his turn with the Dream Gift. So... Um, we did play the Dedenne last turn, and then we got Marnied into kind of a tough hand. Uh, so we'll see what we top deck, but we're probably just going to have a quick ball for the Zacian. We actually find the research, though, which is super, super cool. I'm going to get rid of the Zapdos. Probably not going to be too useful in the matchup. Uh, we could prioritize getting a Bronzor here, but we're probably just going to be ending our turn uh, with an Intrepid Sword. So I'm going to prioritize grabbing the Zacian, I think. Um, and uh, we're going to bench that guy, and then we're just going to research. Uh, we're going to get rid of the Cheryl. Um, I don't know if Cheryl would be super, super good in this matchup, but I think it could be definitely pretty decent. Um, let's evolve that Duralid on VMAX. Super happy to have gotten that thing uh, out immediately. And now we can actually, I think, Quick Ball. But what do we want a Quick Ball for is the question. Um, we're already down one of our saucers, uh, but we don't have any medals in the discard pile. Um, nothing in this hand is anything I really want to discard. Um, hmm. we, might be, we might be pitching the metal saucer, if I'm being honest. We could get rid of Cheryl. Um, but then we wouldn't have any Cheryl's left for the entire game. So I am actually going to get rid of a Metal Saucer here. And now we can grab our little Bronzor. He has a big hand, so, you know, he definitely can boss something up this turn. Um, like, he can kind of KO the Bronzor, the Zacian, things like that. We do find one Metal Energy with the Zacian, which is pretty good. Um, but, um, uh, you know, we're going to want to find a Bronzong to move some of these energies around a little bit. Here comes the Evolution Incense. So he's definitely going to be committing to the V Maxes here. Um, at this point, though... You know, we're in a situation where he can take five prize cards between the Dedenne, the Zacian, and the Bronzong. Um, he can't really go through two of these Amazentas, at least with the Sylveons. Um, and it's going to be difficult for him to go through the Duraludon. It looks like he's going to Marnie us, so hopefully he doesn't Marnie us into another bad hand. Um, but he is weak to metal, right? So I think that Zacian is going to be too good. I think we had to get that thing down. I think that was super, super important for us. Um, and again, another kind of an awkward hand. And he's going to get that Moltres down as well. Now, luckily, Duraludon VMAX is going to be able to one-hit KO that, uh, that Moltres, so that's something we could kind of uh, figure out. And there comes the Urshifu, so he's definitely going to bench that. And if we see the boss's turn, well, he Marnied, so no boss is coming out. Uh, but going to be another turn where he doesn't, uh, or at least he's not able to attack us. Um, and I'm actually kind of happy about that. Uh, we'll have to see what we top deck again. Uh, we're both kind of setting up at this point. Um, but I think that uh, overall, 
you know, we're not in a terrible position. Uh, it's just going to be difficult for him to realistically get much off. Um, okay, so this is a, another interesting, uh, I guess, situation to be in. Um, hmm. The thing is, do we want to play this boss and try to force him to switch? He's not down any of his switching outs, and I think he might have a scape rope in the hand. Uh, I'm going to attach this energy to the Zamazen to V. I think it's probably the most safe uh, option to put this on. Um, uh, yeah, so we're going to do that. Let's get rid of the... I don't want to get rid of that metal energy because we're already down two saucers. I don't know if it's really beneficial, uh, but I also kind of want to keep the calm as well. Um, yeah, we're actually going to get rid of that energy. And now we're kind of forced again to just Intrepid Sword. Uh, we do find the Evolution Incense, which is pretty good. Um, but we would like a draw supporter. Um, so getting rid of that energy might not have been the best play or the safest play, uh, honestly. But we can move that energy. We have three on board total, so we can start kind of attacking at this point, And we have switch in hand. Uh, so we'll see what he's kind of got going on. Uh, if he KOs the Zacian this turn, that could be trouble. That gets rid of one of our, en one of our energies. Um, but... Um, you know, that Duraludon VMAX that we have could be, honestly, an extremely good option. So he's going to escape rope us. Um, and I'm feeling fine to just go into this other Zamazenta V, probably our best uh, defensive option at the moment. Um, now, Duraludon VMAX is good, but he has the capability of kind of getting multiple uh, energies. Now, this Urshifu is not going to be able to attack uh, Duraludon VMAX ever, probably, uh, because it needs the, uh, the, the energies. But the Sylveon in the, in the Moltres can definitely do damage to the Duraludon. Uh, so it's kind of going to be one of those little balances between, uh, you know, going between the Zamazentas as a wall and the, and the Duraludon as a wall. Uh, but we definitely might uh, get a KO on that Sylveon next turn. And it, yeah, we're definitely going to do that. Uh, so we're going to KO the Sylveon VMAX with the Zacian this turn. And I think that's definitely going to be a pretty smart play. He grabs the energy switch, which is also pretty interesting, I think. Uh, but now we can go ahead, Evolution Incense. We finally have some cards to make things happen. Uh, let's grab our Bronzog. Super important. We got this thing out a little bit late. Um, but we can take three prize cards this turn, and I'm pretty... Or two, I guess, prize cards, because he does have uh, the Ribbon. Uh, I still think it's probably the best option to KO with Zacian on that thing this turn, because uh, I think we're pretty much safe the following turn. I don't think he's going to have anything to do enough damage to us. Um, yeah, let's do it. Uh, I mean, is that the best play? I'm trying to think. Hmm. We could just attack with Duralin on VMAX. It wouldn't get the KO, but I don't know what he would be able to really do in retaliation. Um, so I think that's actually our safest play. Let's go into the Duraludon and, and hit this turn. Um, and we can actually just KO the active. Um, and I think that that's actually a pretty good situation. We could bring up the Moltres, actually. Um, hmm. I'm actually going to bring up the Moltres. Uh, <laughs> it's, there's so many different options with this deck. Uh, so many different routes that we can go. Uh, but I think that's going into the Duraludon here. And I think... The Moltres is, is going to be um, the, our best target for a KO here. Um, we'll see. Do we have any more bosses orders left in our deck? Uh, I think that we have one more after this, which is definitely an interesting situation. Uh, let's bring up the Moltres here, though. Um, just because this is the one thing that's going to be able to really deal with our Duraludon VMAXs. Um, and uh, let's get this thing out of the way. It also accelerates energy throughout, him, throughout the game. Um, and now he could boss up the Zacian and kind of KO that. There's the boss off the prize cards, which is really, really nice. Um, we would like another switch. How many switch are we down at this point? We're just down one switch, so. Yeah, so I, I mean, I think that we can kind of go Zacian to KO one of these Sylveons. Uh, we could also boss up the Urshifu and take two more prize cards. I think overall we're in a pretty good situation. I don't know if he really has any way uh, to do damage to our Duraludon here. Uh, he's going to grab the Urshifu, and like I said, you know, he can snipe the bench, so he might KO the Bronzong. And he might do some damage to the Dedene. Like I said, that's going to be three prize cards. He could go through the Zacian V. That's four prize cards. But um, he has to go through the either one Duraludon VMAX or a Zamazenta V. And that's just going to be a little bit more difficult for him to do. Um, so, yeah. I mean, he's definitely, he should target, I think, the Bronzong here. I think that's probably his smartest play. And uh, he targets that and the Zacian. So, again, I'm, I'm, pretty, um, I'm pretty confident that that was probably the correct choice on his part. Um, but... Um, you know, I'm not feeling too bad about any of it. Let's attach to a Zamazenta here. Um, now, at this point, we can't really uh, play another Bronzong down. Uh, we just can't give him the option to take those prize cards. Um, also, what we could do is boss up the Sylveon and attack it, but I think we're just going to target the Urshifu here in the active. Um, we're going to do 220 to this guy, and we have boss's orders to bring that thing up, uh, bring this guy up again next turn. But, uh, Okay, so it's we're in an interesting situation. He could pull something out here. Again, I don't really know how he's going to go through the Duraludon. Um, 
or the or the Zamazenta V's, if I'm being honest. Um, so we'll we'll see. Uh, Sylveon V has the attack magic shot 60, so that's not really going through us. He could Crobat. I'm pretty confident that that's not going to be a great option for him, uh, to be 100% honest. Uh, and he's got a Marnius, so I was kind of uh, a little bit scared of the defensive boss. If he were to bring up one of these things, uh, we would have had to find a way to, to switch out. Um, that would have been pretty tough for us, I think. But yeah, let's go ahead, and uh, we're going to get Martied into switch, research, pretty good hand overall. Um, and I think we're pretty safe to just kind of start hitting for 220 and on whatever's in the active. Like I said, the Sylveon can't touch us with the special energy. This Urshifu here already has 220 damage on. So he is going to go into the Sylveon. Uh, he can't... Um, and he's going to end on Dream on Dream Gift. So uh, he can grab an item card, I think. Yeah, so he grabs the Quick Ball. Uh, interesting. Interesting for sure. Let's just keep attaching to the Zamazenta here. Um, and now we could research to try to find that last boss that's in the deck. Uh, the thing is, I don't know if I really want to get rid of one of these switches. I think that's probably um, pretty important. Um, I feel pretty fine just going with the G-Max Pulverization, although if we research, we could have boss for next turn, which might guarantee the game. Um, but, um, although I don't think, it's at the bottom of our deck, right? So we'd have to shuffle, um, we have no way to shuffle the deck at the moment. Uh, let's just go ahead and take the, the three price KO on the active here, I think. I think that's going to be a good play on us, uh, for us at least. There's the Metal Saucer, uh, Quick Ball, and the Marnie. Okay. We could have attached the energy to Zacian as well, uh, just to kind of threaten the, the capability of Saucer attach and then kind of finish off the, with the game with the KO with Zacian on the Sylveon. Um, but I, I, I honestly think that we're in a pretty fine position either way. He's going to give us the angry face. Yeah, man, I, I, it's a hard matchup. And, and Duralid, this is what Duraladon does best. Uh, there's so many matchups, like any of the Rapid Strike decks, Single Strike decks. Um, Eternatus. There's a lot of decks that really, really struggle with Duraludon. Uh, it's just a deck that has so many good matchups. And even though we're kind of a slower-paced deck, it takes us a little while to kind of set up, and we have a lot of things on our bench that we might need. Uh, overall, I just think that um, I think that we have the advantage so many different uh, so many different ways. Um, and he's going to keep playing it out. Alan Games here. I'm really happy that he is playing out the matchup. Uh, we see the uh, is this the, a weak guard energy or it's a capture energy. So that Sylveon can't damage the Duraludon, and it looks like he's going to try to start setting up the Urshifu. There's that defensive boss, too, and he's going to bring up the Zacian to KO it. Um, like I said, you know, I, we can't really do much about that. You know, he's going to take two prize cards, uh, but either way, he has to go through the Duraludon uh, or a Zamazenta V, and I think it's just going to be really difficult for him to do that. Um, we have one boss's orders left in deck, though, so I think that we're going to go ahead and just try to get that uh, figured out. Uh, what I actually kind of want to do here is maybe attack with Zamazenta on this Sylvie on this turn. Um, I don't think we would be in jeopardy of getting KO'd, um, and I kind of like that play, if I'm being honest. Let's quick ball, though, away the Cheryl. We're going to thin out some, some cards from our deck. Uh, we see that we do have boss's orders and a ton of other cards left in here, um, so that might be just a little bit uh, tricky. I am going to actually switch. Uh, do we switch, though? We should have one switch card left in deck. Let me just double check. Um, I should have checked before. If we have another switch in here, I don't mind switching already. We do have one switch. Um, so, yeah. We're, we are going to do that. Oh, I should have just grabbed another. Okay. I did the opposite of thin there. I, I put a card back into the deck. Either way, let's switch into Zamazenta. And we're going to research. Potentially draw into this boss to set up the KO for next turn. Uh, we do not, uh, unfortunately. But we can attach, I suppose, to this other Zamazenta V. And uh, I like the Assault Tackle here. We're doing 260, but we're also getting rid of that Rapid Strike Energy, uh, which in my opinion is definitely uh, a pretty decent play to be doing at this point. He only has three cards in hand as well, and his bench is full. Um, so I think that we're in a pretty good spot, you know? Uh, push comes to shove, we can always manual retreat into this Duraludon. Uh, so I think that we're honestly in a pretty good spot. The Duraludon VMAX Zamazenta V combo is a combo that wins uh, uh, a lot of matchups pretty consistently. Um, so we're going to see him attach that Rapid Strike Energy. Unfortunately, though, he's not going to be able to attack uh, us because we're immune. And yeah, he's going to go ahead and concede the game. I'm surprised he didn't do it a, a little while ago. Uh, but yeah, man, Duraludon VMAX, and, and that's how it goes sometimes. Uh, that is really how Duraludon can go. Let's try to get one more game um, and see if uh, we can find a matchup that might be a little bit less um, lopsided. Uh, could be tough, though. Duraludon does have that effect on a lot of matchups right now uh, in the format. But let's get into game number two. All right, let's try to get into a second game here with Duraludon VMAX. Unfortunately, our opponents have, uh, I guess, left the game prematurely uh, the last couple matchups that we've played. But, um, you know, 
could be uh, could be worse. Would we like to go first? Let's go second. We're kind of on a good streak here with Duraladon going second. Uh, the hand here also kind of decent. I don't know what we're going up against, but I think I would rather keep Zamazenta here in the active uh, than a little Bronzor. So let's go ahead and just do that, I think. It uh, looks like we're playing Jolteon V or VMAX, whatever it might be. Uh, but I think that this is a matchup that um, we can go ahead and do our typical Zamazenta V, Zacian V, and Duraludon shenanigans. Our hand is a little bit awkward. We might be Dedenaing here. Uh, never something that we typically want to do. Um, Mew might be good in the matchup, uh, in a lot of matchups. It might be good in the deck, to be honest with you. There's a lot of scenarios where Mew definitely would be pretty beneficial to protect this little Bronzong here on our bench. But, um, you know... He's actually going to just go ahead and straight Gormandize, so he misses the attachment on the Jolteon. A um, little bit tough for him. We have three Metal Saucers in our hand, though. Uh, you hate to see it. It uh, looks like Metal Saucer. We're not going to be utilizing it too much here uh, in this matchup, but uh, we're going to go ahead and just grab a Dedenne, and we can Saucer this guy onto the Bronzong. Um, we're not going to play that uh, that boss. We're going to go ahead and just discard that with two of the other Metal Saucers, so now we only have one left in the deck if it's not prized. Uh, but we'll have to see what we draw into. Uh, more kind of awkward cards that we've been drawing here. Um, but uh, let's attach to the Zamazenta. And I'm going to just go ahead and Marnie. There's the other Metal Saucer, though, uh, which is cool. Unfortunately, we're not going to be able to use it this turn. Let's see what we draw off the Marnie. Uh, um, okay. So not that bad, um, I think. Not that bad at all. We could grab a Zacian here and end our turn with Intrepid Sword. That might be the best option. Uh, but I do kind of want to get a Duraludon VMAX. Uh, next on for next turn. Um, so we could put it to Duralid on V, but I think our best bet here uh, probably just going to be to grab a Zacian and end our turn with an Intrepid Sword. Um, can't really complain about that. Um, and uh, okay, there's the Duralid on VMAX yet again. So, you know, sometimes it happens like that. Might have been better to just grab the Duralid on V since we did have the research in hand, but you know what, we're just going to go ahead and just do things. So there comes the Zigzagoon, uh, the Jolteon V. He's definitely going to be targeting the Bronzong. Uh, that's exactly what he wants to do. He could do it this turn. He could evolve. Uh, he could find the Elemental Badge. Uh, there's a lot of things that he could be doing here. That is definitely a Marnie. Yep, okay. Uh, it is what it is. Let's see what we draw into here off the Marnie. Hopefully not four bad cards. We do have a Zacian if we need to end our turn with the Intrepid Sword. Um, okay. It's definitely an interesting hand, uh, I, I suppose. Um, he could also go with Pin Missile, which could do quite a bit of damage, I'm not going to lie. Uh, there's that research, though. We love to see the research, uh, for sure. Uh, let's attach to the Zamazenta V so we can get the KO on the Snorlax this turn. And we are going to get rid of that last Metal Saucer. Unfortunately, these guys just want to get discarded this game. Uh, we can't really do too much about it. Let's put uh, put Chaotic Swell into play. Uh, let's get rid of the... Well, the Zapdos could be interesting because uh, the Jolteon is weak to the Zapdos. So uh, let's hold off on getting rid of that Zapdos for now. Um, and let's grab ourselves one of these cool little Duraludon Vs. And, uh, yeah, I kind of want to keep the Zapdos around, you know, just, uh, just in case we want to get a one nice one-hit KO on a VMAX. So, I like the Zapdos in here as well. Um, Jolteon, I suppose, might be a deck that people are playing, so that could be another reason to run Zapdos in the deck. But, mainly, it's there for E-Turn. The double Zamazenta Zapdos uh, Bronzong box kind of feel to the deck uh, definitely helps a lot. Uh, for sure, in, in both of these matchups. But um, he, his state, you know, he's setting up his board. He's kind of getting things grooving here. Um, he definitely might KO this Bronzong this turn, though. Um, that's just something we might have to deal with. Path to the Peak comes into play, unfortunately, though. Uh, that is going to get discarded with the Chaotic Swell. So it's good. He's not going to be able to attack our Zamazenta this turn, uh, which is pretty preferable. We don't see Ore Beetle, so this might be one of those straight uh, Jolteon decks. He discarded both captures. Uh, probably makes sense. He probably doesn't want to go ahead and put those special energies on because uh, he knows we might be running the Duraludon. And he's going to go ahead and start making do. Uh, make make doing? I don't know how you would say that. Uh, he does get the second energy on the Jolteon. That is a special, though. That's a speed energy. So uh, if we can get our Duralid on VMAX next turn, uh, we should be in a pretty good situation. Um, yeah, he's going to go ahead and just focus on KOing the Bronzong there. Uh, not a bad play on his part, you know, to be 100% honest. I cannot really uh, fault him for doing that, I think. Uh, but I'm going to attach to the Duraludon. Well, no, because we want a special energy on board, right? In case we do get into the Duraludon VMAX. Um, we don't have any Metal Saucers left, though, is the thing. But we don't have any Metal in the discard pile, either. Um, let's get rid of the of the Zacian. Hmm. Let's grab another Zamazenta. Um, the thing is, do we bench the Zapdos to potentially get the KO on this thing this turn? Because um, that is a possibility. We just need an Aurora energy. Although we can't move the energies now anyway. So um, Zapdos might not be the play this game, unfortunately. 
Um, yeah, we're not going to attach that energy yet. Let's just Marnie. Uh, he has a big hand, so let's drop that uh, that hand size down, I think. Let's see what we draw into here. Um, interesting hand. We're just kind of rolling with Zamazenta at this point. Um, but, you know, sometimes it's just kind of like that. Let's attach this one to the... Um, hmm, yeah, let's attach to the Duraludon. I keep forgetting we don't have Bronzong uh, on our bench anymore. Um, so let's go ahead and Assault Tackle. Just going to do 130. We are discarding that speed energy, though, so pretty cool. Uh, it is a nice three-hit KO on the Jolteon, uh, so definitely going to be one of these slower games. But I think that the double Zamazenta uh, should be enough to kind of carry us through the matchup for the most part. At this point, we can kind of play the long game. I don't know if I want to discard the Sheryls, although we might just do that anyway because we don't have Bronzong. Um, so they probably aren't going to be that helpful for us. Uh, he's actually going to scoop up net probably the Zigzagoon, and this is what he's going to be uh, using to do that 100 damage to our bench. And he's going to be targeting the Dene here. Um, he either has Elemental Badge or another Energy to you get that attack off for Jolteon. Um, and if he does KO the Dene, you know, it is what it is. There's not much we can do. He is going to Marnie us. Uh, let's see what he Marnies us into. Hopefully it's not a terrible hand. Uh, this matchup is tricky, though. I think benching the Duraludon might have been a mistake. I don't know if it was ever really needed for us to do that, but um, I think it's going to be pretty difficult for him to actually KO the Duraludon um, if we get into the VMAX. So, you know, potentially maybe not that bad uh, of a play either way. Uh, there's the path to the peak. So he is going to be able to do 100 damage to the Zamazenta here this turn, but he misses the energy, so that's pretty big for us. Uh, but yeah, uh, we can feel free to get rid of that thing with our own Chaotic Swell. Uh, let's Evolution Incense. Grab that Duraludon. And let's evolve it. Um, now, I think our best play is going to be to just KO this, uh, this Zigzagoon um, and take the prize card. Uh, we have the Aurora in hand as well. So this is going to be really good. That 220 damage from the Duraludon going to be enough to finish off a KO on the Jolteon as well. Uh, so I like kind of our situation here. Next turn, if he leaves this Jolteon in the active, uh, we're going to be able to finish it off. Uh, but again, if he has the ele uh, the Elemental Badge or whatever it's called, uh, he can attach that to Jolteon, attach an energy, and he can attack for one energy. So he might be attacking with this active Jolteon uh, this turn. Um, but if he brings up this one, this benched one here, uh, we're going to be able to KO it with Duraludon this upcoming, upcoming turn, which I think will be pretty beneficial. Here comes this, the third uh, Sinshino, and I think the make-do engine is actually going to be extremely good post-rotation. Um, I was actually playing it with uh, Rayquaza and Rose, which is pretty good. I think it's just overall a really good uh, card to be running. He does attach to this Jolteon uh, with a speed energy, draws two more. Does he have that elemental badge, which we know he needs. And he does have it, uh, which is interesting. Uh, no path to the peak. So he's going to go ahead and just do 100 damage to probably our bench to Dene. Um, and that's exactly what he's going to do here. Uh, I'm kind of fine with that. You know, I think that he's kind of uh, uh, planning... Oh, the boss's order is here. Absolutely massive. I don't think we play it yet, though, if I'm being 100% honest. Um, yeah, I don't think it's actually smart to play it yet. Let's attach that, discard the Duraludon. And uh, we're just going to go ahead and assault tackle. We're going to discard that energy off of him. Um... Tool Scrapper also could be really good in the deck. There's just too, not that many spots in, in our deck, so uh, just kind of have to think about that for a sec, uh, realistically. I don't know if he plays any more Path to the Peaks. He might. He's down two. He only has 10 cards left in his deck. He does have quite a few cards in hand, but with that boss's orders, I'm feeling pretty confident uh, that we're definitely going to be able to hopefully get a KO this turn unless he Marnies us. Um, and I think we're definitely going to target this one. Uh, well, actually, it doesn't really matter, to be honest. This one has the energy, so maybe we target that, but they're both one energy away. Um, we'll see. Goes down to eight cards in deck. Um, I, again, I think it's just going to be really difficult for him uh, with his deck and these Jolteons to kind of finish off the prize race before us. Uh, like I said, we can switch into this Duraludon. We have boss in hand, uh, so we're in a pretty good spot. And there comes another path to the peak, the third one. Uh, unfortunately, though, uh, going to get uh, discarded with the Chaotic Swell. So um, I think that, honestly, we're in a pretty good spot. Um, I don't think he has any way to take three prize cards this upping, upcoming turn. Uh, so we can just switch into the Duraludon. Let's take a KO on the active Jolteon uh, with that massive 220 uh, damage attack. And now we have boss in hand for game next turn. We're also taking three prize cards here, which is pretty good. Uh, we could see a reset stamp on him. We could see a lot of different stuff. But uh, we're kind of in a checkmate position where he has to attack with the Jolteon and we can KO with the Duraludon. Um, here comes the Zigzagoon. Going to target that Zacian, uh, but like I said, uh, going to be really difficult. He actually Sheryl's, but I like that play. So if he has energy and he's got elemental badge, which he does, uh, actually a really great play on his part, uh, if I'm being 100% honest. Uh, we can take one more hit, though. Um, we can definitely take one more hit. Um, uh, we have game in hand. I don't. What am I talking about, guys? Why, like, why am I even worried? We don't need to go through the Jolteon. We have boss in hand. We have one prize card left. 
Uh, GG, easy game. Uh, Duralin on VMAX, best deck in the format. Can't really do much. Uh, let's give him the heart. Doesn't even show because we already won the game. Anyway, guys, sorry about that. Sometimes you're just so focused on KOing specific Pokemon, you forget you only have one prize card remaining. So, uh, pretty significant, uh, I guess, two games. I mean, Sylvie on VMAX, Jolty on VMAX. Uh, they definitely have a really tough time with the Duraludon VMAX and Double Zamazenta. Uh, most decks do, to be 100% honest with you, and post-rotation probably going to be no different. Uh, Duraludon VMAX, people are sleeping on it. It's absolutely incredible. Has such a great matchup spread. I think it is the new uh, Luke Metal, um, and in some ways might be even better uh, once rotation comes. Uh, so let me know what you guys think of Duraludon VMAX. In my opinion, it's extremely good, and I'm really excited to see what you guys think. Uh, how would you guys play Duraludon? Would you guys build the deck differently? Let me know, but I do think Zamazenta definitely really good. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe. We're going to be covering future uh, Evolving Skies deck lists here in the next few days. Plenty of new cards still to take a look at, and we're definitely going to be doing that uh, over the next few days. Also, don't forget to uh, play and register for Chill Series number 45 this upcoming Wednesday. It's actually an extra special Chill Series tournament. This is actually the first week of Chill Series where Evolving Skies cards and decks will be legal for play. Not only that, we have 300 Evolving Skies packs in the prize pool, and on top of that, we actually have four gold quick balls uh, in the prize pool, and we're going to be giving one of those gold quick balls to each player who makes top four uh, for this upcoming Wednesday's Chill Series. Really can't wait. Link to register is going to be down in the description below. You guys have an absolutely great day. Uh, thank you so much for watching the video. Like the video, subscribe. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a great day, and uh, yeah, peace out.